of Veligrad. One of the areas that sometimes is associated with Veligrad is Naklo. Naklo isn't Veligrad, but it's an interesting area by in of itself. By the Moravian Sahara, where you could see the sand in the soil, there was a place with hydrocarbon deposits and mud volcanoes. This is it. This is Naklo. The mud volcanoes would smoke and there would be fires. And this was right next to the desert, just above the river Morava. It was said to be used by the Slavs as a burial site. And some folklorists would like it to be the site of Velegrad. And as you can see, it has a lot of visitors from all parts of the world that are interested in Slavic history, Slavic culture, and Slavic mythology. It's uh, supposed to be a mountain, but uh, it's only about 265 meters high, which uh, isn't much of a mountain. Nonetheless, I can imagine that it would have been a very strange place back in the 800s and 900s, and rumors of dragons were certainly around at the time in Narkla. From there we moved on to the proper, probably the proper site of Velegrad, which is uh, uh, Staro Miesto. And this is um, the town next door. And here we have a church and little settlement that dates back to uh, the 8th century and um, was aligned east-west and sited on top of this hill um, looking over the, the current town. What's interesting is that the city of Velegrad was said to have three mountain peaks close by and those are probably them. You can see that it was a fairly small church with a number of grave sites around it and that's an artist reconstruction of what it may have looked like. And this is the church, what's left of it anyway, which is basically just on the hillside. You can just visit it anytime you please. Not very large, as you might expect. As I said, aligned, aligned on an east-west axis. And what struck me was the possibility of potentially energy lines. So I decided to uh, douse the area um, of the church and to my utter amazement, I discovered an energy line running, there's the three hills again, running east-west directly down the center of the church. Here we go, this is me. And as you can see, as I get to the middle of the axis, there's the energy line, about a meter, meter or so thick. There's the end of it. And as you can see, I'm pretty impressed and, and very happy to have found it. How they did that, I have no idea. How do you cite a church on an energy line? Not a clue. Well, within the town there, Maserikova Namiesti is reputed to be the site of a place called St. George's Island. And St. George, of course, I think uh, sort of ties in with the dragon myth as well and dragons are usually associated with places of earth energy so this is how the square looks these days um, it's quite pretty a typical sort of uh, town square in a small czech town had a very nice cup of coffee and a small piece of cake and then we left for Stare Miesto, which we didn't really see much there. We, we did see a bit of an exhibition with these pictures, that's um, city walls. And then in a, in a churchyard cemetery, we did find more uh, ruins from the Slavic period, the 800, 900, 1000 sort of period. But we really didn't see much. And we moved right along then to Modra, which is just down the road and next door to Velehrad. There's Velehrad which is the Basilica with its energy, earth energy that I've documented in one of my blogs. And the purpose of going to Modra was twofold. One was to visit this open air museum, which is a reconstruction of a Slavic village and very well done, if I may say so, um, complete with animals and uh, obviously hours and hours and weeks and months and years of work put into building this thing. 
And you did kind of get a sense that uh, the technology um, they used was pretty decent, actually. Ovens, clay ovens, um, there was a, a couple of furnaces. Um, I was quite taken by the window blinds and how they were supposed to have operated. Um, quite an impressive little place and well worth a visit if you're in the area. There's those uh, window blinds held on by strips of leather with a simple string arrangement to pull them up to open the window. Here you see a couple of the uh, ovens. And a simulation of some of the utensils and wooden materials that they would have needed. We were also given little maps with explanations and that was part of the entry fee. So it was a very reasonable uh, cost to get in and uh, spend a good couple of hours exploring what it might have been like to live in a Slavic town or village fortified settlement around the time of Ra Ra Rastislav, now Saint Rastislav of course. Uh, he was the prince of Greater Moravia that invited the two saints uh, to bring Christianity to the region, celebrated in the St. Cyril and Methodius Day. And then above that on the hill is a reconstruction of a church. By the way, there's the three hills again that are reputed to have been close to Velograd. Velograd. This is inside the reconstructed church, very beautiful. The church was apparently um, dedicated to St. John the Baptist, and there's a little plaque saying so. As you can see, quite small, uh, quite compact, but does the job. And this reconstruction is sited right next door to the actual ruins of the church, which we will see in a moment. So here are the ruins. Again, there was numerous grave sites around the ruins of the church, just a simple little church. And again, it was oriented east-west. And again, dowsing showed me that an energy line ran straight down the centre of the church east-west, which again, I, I don't understand how they were able to do this. Some of the burials yielded some interesting artefacts from the period, earrings and swords and daggers and that kind of thing, and one of them is documented right here with horse stirrups and other bits and pieces that were there with the body. And finally we decided to go over to Kralu's stool, which is King's Table, which is a stone circle, uh, one of very few stone circles in this part of the world that I really like to visit. Great atmosphere, just a few miles up the road from Modra and uh, very well worth looking at um, and I need to do a lot more background research on this and this uh, I use this particular feature as the front cover to my book Chasing Dragons in Moravia which is about my exploits looking for earth energy and dealing with Slavic history and mythology and the Slavic hierarchy of gods. And there you go. If you are interested in this kind of thing, please do visit my website, which is earthmagicbruno.com, and you'll find there lots of blog articles and, and uh, articles of interest. Um, and also you could potentially look at my books, Chasing the Shaman and Chasing Dragons in Moravia, which are both books about my explorations of the region and connecting with the land. Thank you very much. My main website is garymvesey.com. Please do visit. Goodbye.